Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is going to be a rather unusual video for several ways, and we will explain that very shortly. You're looking at an Object 261, it's a Tier 10 Soviet SPG. It's located on the Eastbourne of Sand River Encounter, and it's under the command of Mr. Music of the Salty Jedi Alliance. Now, what's unusual about this video? Well, it's going to be two battles, and two battles from two different periods. And what I'm trying to explain is somebody contacted us, one of the subscribers, and said, could you show us a replay of what it used to be like when RT actually had the full power? And we do have some replays like that, back from 9.17, before they nerfed RT and introduced the stun mechanic. Okay, well... I thought, yeah, we can do that. We can show two different videos showing two different battles, but showing the same RT in each case so you can see the difference between the two. And we're going to do this for a series of different videos about different RTs, so you'll get to see how much difference there has been since they brought in the stun mechanic. Now, it'll be interesting for tank drivers to look at as well, because they'll be able to judge for themselves, you know, is the stun mechanic all that bad? Because obviously it's not nice being stunned, but would they really want to be hit by a RT round that can actually strip them of most of their hit points with just one shot? That's a good question. They might say, well, I happily put up with being one-shotted out of the game so long as I didn't have to put up with that annoying stun all the time. Uh, look at these two tanks together here now. If this was back in 9.17 they grouped together like that, they both suffer massive damage. But as it is, they probably both suffered stun there. They were very, very close together. And the VK4502 has suffered a lot of stun assist. Now, the 18cm gun on the... Object 261 can do 900 alpha, penetrates 45 millimeters of armor. And that was a non-penetrating shot, went straight into the side of the VK4502B, who's really not particularly bothered about the fact that he's standing sideways to the RT. If he was careful, he'd actually get into RT cover. And now he's actually been taken out of the game. Now that VK, he's nicely angled, so that's probably going to reduce the effect of some of the RT, but of course HE is no respecter of angling normally. It just deflects some of the shots that actually hit it at the wrong angle. Okay, Mr. Music's going for the Centurion 7-1, fires around and it's gonna miss. Yep, near miss, but 172 hit points again. And you notice that Mr. Music relocates after every shot to avoid being counter-batteried. Now both the replays we're uh, going to watch are on Sand River, so you get to see the same map, but this battle is with the new graphics, and the other one, which is 9.17, is with the old graphics. So you also see a big difference in how they look. It's basically same, still got the same terrain, but... Obviously, there's a lot more uh, features in this particular version. Well, the IS-3 is gone. Oh, he peeked over the side to try and get the uh, Centurion. And he's paid for it with some splash damage. And both tanks have been stunned. The Star 2 as well. Mr. Music trying to get shots on these guys. The Centurion 7 1 goes down. And oh, lovely shot there. That that damaged both of the tanks. The Star, Star 2 suffered almost as much as the uh, IS 2 2. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of enemy tanks that have gone into the riverbed. An Object 277 and a Wizzy 120, but. 
you can see that Mr. Music's ignoring them for the moment. He's going to focus on these tanks up north. Hits the... Uh, oh, he set fire to the IS-22. And it looks like that tank driver had a good crew because they managed to put the fire out. He didn't have a premium fire extinguisher, but he did have quick reactions. Either that or, or the crew was well trained. Now, the IS-7's already safe in that position. We've got a red line and the IS-22 is now being killed. Now, surprisingly, we're losing this battle at the moment. Three down on the enemy. He fired around in there and just killed the Object 277, which is his first kill of the game. And notice he's repositioning again. There appears to be a Gorilla 15 in the cap. And the scores have actually been equaled. And that's good news because they, when they were three tanks down, there was a very good chance they might lose. In fact, they've got more hit points than the enemy's got now. The IS-7 up in the north, he's been killed. Unfortunately, we just lost an Object 257. Firing for the gorilla. Didn't get a reset, so he must be behind one of the other buildings now. Looking for the spot where he might be located. Most of these buildings are being knocked down one by one. Can't he afford to waste HE on just demolishing buildings, though? We really need to hit things. And there's the gorilla. He's hiding behind that big building there. And, well, thankfully, one of our teammates knocked the building down. And the gorilla, well... The SU-101 goes in. He hasn't knocked the uh, hit points off that gorilla, but it, you can see that Mr. Music did. And he accidentally hit his own teammate in the process. Going for the Wizzy 120, who leaves the cap. There he is. Scores are still even, 10 each. Oh, that round landed just behind the gorilla. Mr. Music's got seven rounds left. It's very easy to run out of ammunition in the Object 261. It fires so quickly. 27 seconds is a reload, and that's a, a very, very quick reload for an 18 centimeter gun. In fact, it's faster reload you might say, the many of the tanks which have got 152 millimeters caliber. Oh, Ferdinand takes that one in the side. 372, badly damaged. There's still two enemy arty out there, so Mr. Music's being careful not to give away his position. Going for the Ferdinand again, loses sight of him. Switches again instead to the Wizzy 120 is now one shot. He can splash kill him. Rounds out. This should be a kill. It is. So that's his second kill of the game. He's changing position. He's going to go down into that little dip. Okay, is he going to go round the rock and fire from the other position? Well, there's only three enemies left in the Ferdinand. Well, he'd like to get rid of that. The 50 TP up in the north is looking for the enemy RT. Hasn't found them yet, so I suspect they're a bit further south. The Ferdinand was being spotted by the gorilla, who happens to be behind the mosque. So he's fairly RT safe. We fire a, a speculative shot in to upset the Ferdinand. And the gorilla takes him out of the game. And that means now there's only two enemy RT left. The Gorilla gets killed by the Batchat 155-58 on the enemy team. And there's still plenty of time left, even though it's an encounter battle. You need at least 3 minutes 40 seconds to cap out on encounter. But there's one on the enemy RT, and well, he's auto-aimed on. I wouldn't have done that. No, not when he's fast moving like that. In fact, the danger is the Batchat 155-58 is going to get very close before he shoots. But at least we've still got another teammate who's dialing in on that tank at this moment. The Lorraine 155-51. And the best thing to do would be to get over this ridge line. Stops the Batchat from firing at you. Move. 
keep moving and then let the Lorraine take out that 155.58 and oh he got too close and he went in front of the gun don't go in front of the pointy end and the 50 TP dealt with the other RT so that was the winning shot of the game so Mr. Music does his victory dance. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Mr. Music 611 in the Object 261. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 27 in that one. He also got a gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got a confederate. So uh, uh, let's have a quick look at the team score. He did get the highest damage uh, as an arty in the game. Yep, uh, 4,187, but not the highest damage overall. That went to the Gorilla 15. And uh, he managed to get uh, the highest number of kills, shared that with the Object 2, uh, the 50 TP, and also the Batchat, 20, uh, Batchat 155 58, and the Ferdinand. They all got three kills. When it came to base XP, though, it's Mr. Music with 1,105. He fired 18 rounds, got 8 direct hits, 2 penetrations, 16 splash. Damage of 4,187 hit points, of which 3697 were up more than 300 meters. Obviously, the uh, back chat was a lot closer when he shot him. And one hit by way of splash damage as well. Yes, he did get hit by that back chat. Um, well, in fact, actually, he got hit by the back chat's teammate. And spotted one enemy vehicle, the back chat. Uh, 11 enemies damaged, 3 killed, and 2,486 hit points of stun assist of 14 stuns. He earned 48,088 credits, but after ammunition, resupply, consumables, and repair, he actually made a small loss for the game of 12,873 credits. He earned 1,105 XP and took away 1,658. Well, that ends the battle from the uh, uh, 1.7.1 client. Now we're going to see what the replay looks like from the 9.17 client. Yes, you're looking at an Object 261 from 2017. Yes, this is Cannonball. And Cannonball is in platoon with another Object 261 and a Batch at 25 ton. Now, you can't do that now because Wargaming took away the ability of RT to platoon with each other right from the start. You can only platoon dynamically. But this was back in the day when two RT could come onto the battlefield together and work together. Okay, well, Cannonball's looking for a target. Let's bring up the mini map a bit more so we can see. It's the same map, basically, with slight differences in it. And, of course, not just the uh, quality of the graphics, but also in the terrain. You can see there's no heights overlooking the west side of the map. Fires around in at the E75. Gets a direct hit straight away for 1,075 hit points. Now, he's firing premium ammo which has got alpha damage of 1,700, and it will penetrate 102 millimeters of armor. So it'll do a lot more penetrating shots and a huge amount of damage when it does. That shell he just fired, I suspect that was a non-penetrating shot because it was well under 1,700. Okay, now he's looking at a defender. He's now looking for another target, and he's gone down to the south of the map because he's expecting some of his teammates to do some spotting very shortly. He's indicated where he wants them to look, and they've ticked affirmative on the minimap. Any second now, they're going to see something. Yep, they found someone. It's a defender. It's the I think it's one that's been hit already. I think it was the one he hit uh, was actually an E75, but... That defender's missing a huge amount of hit points. Instead, he was looking to get that Scorpion G. And instead, he's decided to go for that one instead. Rounds out and... Oh! Wipes him out with one shot. 841 hit points. And I think... Yep, the T-54 was happy with that. I think he got the spotting assist. Now, notice the cannonball is changing position. To avoid counter battery, it's, it's still valid in both games. You don't want to get spotted by the enemy. Now, notice it still takes a long time to dial in on target, and you have to be even more certain to 
of your aim to get it right on target because remember accuracy was a problem back then and another direct hit for 1058 hit points and he got a return shot from a batch at 25 time who got very close he's on that ridge line over there he got too close by far and he's lost 401 hit points of damage of health rather and his teammate his platoon mate in the 261 was taken out by an object 140. Okay, he's dialing in on a type 5 heavy. Rounds out. And the shell bounces off the armor. So yes, we were getting sh shells that were trolling us back then as well. Some shells just didn't impact on the target. Or if they did impact, you heard a clang as the shell did absolutely nothing now that never happened in in reality or if it did the shell would normally carve its way through a hole through the target even if it didn't go off rounds out on the type 5 heavy again and yet again he hits the ground well i actually have just noticed that he's actually firing ap rounds at this type 5 heavy he's not firing he and that may explain why the shell bounced off Almost loaded. He's waiting for the type fire. Oh, he has fired. And it did go through for 1,132 hit points. The AP rounds, 18 centimeter ones, will do 1,100 alpha. So that must have been a penetrating shot because it went through 360 millimeters of armor. Now, that's another thing that Wargaming took out of the game for high tier arty that they could carry ap rounds and this is getting rather rock awkward because the enemy is getting very very close now he's loaded an ap round right now fires it at the ap at uh, the amx 50b gets a hit penetrates him 1102 hit points so he's now got 5208 hit points of damage and the battle's only been going five minutes He's loading standard HE again. In fact, actually, it's premium HE. So the difference between the standard HE back then was it had um, alpha damage 1700, penetration of 102 millimeters, whereas the premium uh, also had 1700 and penetration of 102, but it had a, a bigger burst radius, I believe. Okay, he's lining up a shot on an object 140. Goes to Battle Assistant. Yes, we just had it back then. Rounds out. Overshoots. Now he's in a rather bit of a pickle in this area, but if he moves out, he's going to get spotted by the enemy almost immediately because there's an Emil too. Fairly, fairly close. And so backing up this slope at the moment, well, he's having difficulty trying to do it. I don't think he can drive out of there. He's trying, but... Instead, he's decided just to fire from where he is. Lining up a shot in the Emil. That works. Rounds out. Well, it looks like the shell overshot and a shell from an M53, M55 on his team took him out instead. So instead now he's aiming towards the north. He's got a bat chat 25 ton teammate fighting it out with an enemy bat chat and an object 140. He's loaded. Ready to go. Just lining up a shot on the 140, fires in and gets a nice hit. 693 direct hit, three critical hits and the object 140 goes down. Now that was a non-penetrating shot, that one. We still don't know where that bat chat's gone. Saw him going slightly to the north. He might be in the village. He's dialing in on the Type 5. Rounds out. 
overshoots. Even back then we had uh, problems with accuracy, but um, as you can see in this battle so far, Cannonball does have very good accuracy from his crew. Very practiced crew. He's been getting good hits, but occasionally you get shells that miss the target altogether. And yes, I suppose you could put that one down to RNG because the shell was within the rescue. And that one hit the target, but didn't pen. 674 hit points added to the total. Very likely that he's going to have the high caliber. Now just waiting for one of our teammates to spot him. In fact, it's going to have to be the T-54, I think, because I'm pretty sure that the Batchat 25 ton, who's on the ramp, um, what used to be known as Quickie Baby's ramp, is just too far away from that Type 5 to see it. So it looks like T-54 is going to have to move around the corner to just spot where that Type 5 is. He's loaded an AP round for this shot. T-54. Oh, is that proximity spot? I think from the T-54. It's a very, very narrow target. Probably not worth shooting. Yes, he's deliberately staying arty safe, hugging that wall. Okay, T-54's got another spot. Well, he fired the round in, it hits the cliff face, knocks down some rock, but that's about all. Cannonball's decided to change position again. He's a little safer from the back chat if he's on this side. <laughs> also improves his angle, but there's that Scorpion G. And he's loading eight, uh, an AP round again. So he's ignoring the Scorpion G for the moment. And Scorpion G is taken out by the C-54. Still going for that Type 5 Heavy. There he is. Lines him up. He gets a red line from the rock face. That Type 5 knows to stay safe. But the enemy back chat's been located, so the good news is that he could possibly now go north of the riverbank and shoot at the Type 5 that way. There's still three enemy arties out there, but more than likely they will be spotted sooner or later. And there's two of the enemy artists. Is that no? It's one of the enemy artists. It's the M53, M55, running along with the Batchat 25 ton. But instead, we're still going for that Type 5 heavy. And I think we've asked the Batchat to have a quick look. There he is. Line him up. And rounds out. Oh, yes, good penetration there. 1,018 hit points. His total is now 7,500, closer to 7,600. Well, he's loading premium HE for the next round. And I think he wants to take out one of these guys. Lining up on the bat chat. He's decided the bat chat's going to go through that pass. Oh, no, he's not. He's actually decided to turn around and make a sort of like spirited defense. 
Oh, we got him on the move! A blind shot kill on the move! Wow. He judged that he was going to pull forward again, and he did. That was an almost impossible shot. I say almost, but he, he did judge exactly where the guy was going. And he's loading his penultimate HE round. I think he wants to go for the one of the other arties. There's one of them. It's the T92. He's moving the aim over the target. In fact, there's two enemy arties. Which one is he going to go for? Well, I think he's lining up on the T92. Just took some damage. Rounds out. Long flight time. Takes out the T92. The M53 goes down. There's the Object 261. But he's lining this shot up for the Type 5 Heavy. And it's an HE round, but it should take him out. And that's it. That's the game over. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's the first class tanker for Cannonball in the Object 261. He managed to get a Bruiser Medal for getting at least 5 critical hits. He got 13. He got a Gorse Medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points of his own vehicle. And he got the High Calibre in that battle for doing more damage than anyone else in his team. And uh, you can see, there we go, this replay was from 27th of April 2017. He did the most damage in the game, 8,497 hit points of damage. He also happened to do the most kills in the game, but he shared that top slot with the Object 140 on the enemy team. Both got three kills, and then there's a the number of tanks with two kills apiece. And when it came to base XP, he had the top on that one as well. So he's got the top in all three columns, 963 base experience points for him, 930 for the Batch at 25 ton, and 877 for that T-54. He fired 16 rounds, got 11 direct hits, 10 penetrations, and one splash. So you can see it was a lot easier to get penetrations back then, both with standard HE and also with the AP rounds that you could carry at high tier RT. 8,497 hit points of damage, all of it at more than 300 meters. He received one hit. It was from the Batch at 25 ton, who actually worked out or came up on the ridge line, saw where he was, it was a little further forward than he should have been. And he got penetrated. Eight enemy vehicles damaged, three killed, and 907 hit points of damage assistance. No stun because, of course, there wasn't stun back then. And he earned 93,012 credits from that game. And after repair and ammunition resupply, took away a profit of 53,629 credits. He received 1,445 XP, got 289 for playing in a platoon with Artie. And took away 1,734 experience points altogether. So uh, I'll let you judge for yourself which one is the better. Um, they're both very similar games. Both on the same map. Both the same tank. But you can see the big differences between them. Now if you're a tank driver I think you probably want to get rid of stun. And take back uh, instead uh, receive higher damage rolls from an enemy RT. As you saw in this battle, the, the Object 261 was getting damage rolls of sort of like about a thousand hit points. It was, in some cases, taking enemy tanks out the battle with one shot. But if you were a big heavy tank like a Type 5, it was taking a few shots to take you down. And uh, probably better for to have that back again the same way it was, where RT could actually take you out the game with one shot than to suffer the stun that you constantly suffer now uh, every time you get hit. Uh, but of course, obviously, Wargaming do need to compensate RT players for the damage they do. So in a battle like this, he was obviously well compensated because he received a high caliber and a Gauze medal and he did the most damage in the game. And he received a profit when it came to his uh, credits. Now, Wargaming are proposing that they would do the opposite. They would take away the stun but if they do that, they won't be able to compensate the player for the loss of the damage that they would do, as well as the stun assist. So Wargaming need to think about this very carefully, because if you actually do take away stun without giving back the sort of damage that this player was able to do, then you actually would neuter RT finally um, once and for all. And if you did do that, it would destroy the game, because without RT in the game, you wouldn't be able to get hits on some of the enemy tanks, and, uh, well, it would turn the game into stalemate most of the time. 
And in fact, uh, I think Wargaming did admit to, and they certainly admitted to me on one occasion, that every time you take Arty out of the equation and remove them from the game, it ends up with games, far more games being draws, simply because one side does not want to make a mistake that would actually lose them the advantage. So it's a huge mistake to take Arty out of the game, and the only way to get rid of the stun mechanic is to give Arty back the amount of damage they used to do in the past, and that will compensate us for the loss of stun assist. So, which do you think is best, old Arty or new Arty? I'll leave it to you to decide. Thanks for watching.